Hey drummers, Gary Williams is back with another reaction and analysis video. Many of you have been requesting I do a video on Ian Pace, and a lot of you have been suggesting I go back to some of their earlier work of some of these great drummers, which uh, Neil Peart was one of them. So I will be in a future video examining some of his playing, but today we're going to look at the great Ian Pace. So we're going to check out this drum solo that he's playing. I think you're going to like it. Here it is. First of all, it's like, God, is this like one of the great big band drummers or what? I watched this guy play some, but his chops are every bit as advanced as many of the greatest big band drummers. I mean, his hands are frighteningly great. What I started to hear there, I think, was a combination of six stroke roll, pair diddle littles, and then right now, ending where I pause the video, just some rapid fire, super powerful single strokes, very cleanly executed, I might add. What's that hi hat? Okay, yeah, a lot of that is uh, two rights, one left, or two lefts and one right. That, 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 that kind of stuff he's doing, mixing it up with single strokes and pair, pair diddle diddles and various combinations of just generally singles and doubles and his own nice recipe of excellentness. See that? God, the guy's so great. Now, check out that right-hand grip. Notice the closed mouth, not an open mouth, a hand puppet's mouth, where a lot of drummers might have this too open. And really, there's some philosophies where that should always stay open. Well, there's not always a way you play everything. It depends on what you're doing. Quite specifically, there's certain times when you need that trigger finger pinch grip. And if you look at his right hand, he's got that hand puppet's mouth nice and closed. He's, he's playing doubles. Da, la, 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 and he's mixing up with double strokes between the two hands. Just great facility this guy has. There it is again. Single. Might be Buddy Rich. Like Buddy Rich. Yes! Even the angle. God, great rim shot. A lot of that's fine. Maybe single drag taps and different combinations. But suck, 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 suck. He's got this kind of pulse going, right? And then everything's in sick deep. Uh, 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 uh. Playing that kind of four against three polyrhythm. It's super cool. And with double strokes mixed with rim shot accents, orchestrations around the drums. Seems like his hi-hat is kind of steadily going. I can't really hear it. He's kind of following the old traditional big band approach to improvisation, which is the bass drum is not really another limb. This comes into play later with other drummers, Tony Williams being one of them. Of course, uh, you can hear other great drummers like John Bonham who used the, the bass drum as another limb. So at this point in his playing in the earlier part of the, you know, 72, back when this was shot, that a lot of drummers still play with that dun 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 bottom seti bass drum. And then they would riff over the top with the, with the hands. And he's doing something that has that flavor to my ear. Those are just molar triplets. So each hand is doing this. 
and in this case down tap up down tap tap so that's why you can get those threes really ripping is that there's a certain technique where you're incorporating a little bit of wrist a little whip a little rebound so you're not actually having to do everything all by yourself you're working with some rebound yep like the famous big band drummers hi-hat cymbal work Cymbal sound a lot like buddy. Higher pitch, A, still bright. Yes! Love that. Choke crash. Yes. Oh. Speeding up the bass drum foot. While the hands stay steady. That's pretty trick. He's definitely left-handed. Wow! Yes! It's like Buddy Rich! Yeah! Look at that! Speeding up the hands while the foot stays fast and steady. Doubles with sevens there. Triplet. Hand, hand foot. Hand, hand foot. Hand, hand foot. Hand, hand foot. Slow build. The wind up. Look at the flat symbols. Very much big man, Buddy Rich. Team Krupa. Yes! <laughs> Oh, okay, okay, okay. That was great. Left, right, right, left, right, right, left, right, right. And then he went into the... God, this is so smooth. So he went from one type of triplet pattern, which was all hand, single and a double stroke, and the other hand to right, left, foot, or in this case, could be left, right. No, I think it's right, left. Even though he's left-handed. Look at that left hand grip. Doubles it. So beautiful. Notice that pumping motion. Beautiful. Okay, right here he's on the edge of the drum, taking advantage of that ringier, fluffier, higher tension, which gave you a really smooth buzz roll. Just purrs. Notice again that grip where he's got the hand puppet's mouth closed, so he's using a lot of trigger finger. The optimal grip for getting that really nice orchestral buzz so he can really get tight, fine grain buzz stroke. And then he opens him up by releasing some of that pressure. But this is just so suspenseful. Very much, I'm, I'm blown away. I'm blown away. This guy is freaking amazing. <laughs> oh, God! That was awesome! Gosh! I can't believe that. I'm, I mean, I'm just like, so the, uh, turn this thing off so we don't have to keep hearing this. <laughs> God, that guy is just so great! Oh, man! You know, I did it on the back Burner of Ian Pace, I admit. I'm a little younger generation, so I didn't grow up listening to a lot of Deep Purple. I was kind of more of like Kansas, Rush, yes, sort of generation. Anyways, I am super blown away by this guy. His facility is unbelievable. And his musical approach to soloing, the peaks and the valleys, exploring a lot of the stuff that the great traditional big band drummers did before him that were obviously a big influence. And 
man, the bar has been set. You know, I've watched other drummers do solos, but so far I kind of think Ian has moved up to the top of my favorite in terms of these classic rock drummer solos where they actually had a whole lot of facility. These guys spent some serious time. I'm sure Ian took private lessons. I mean, let's face it, none of these drummers are as good as they are without having sought instruction. I think there's this sort of myth, the American Idol concept of drummers that you just, I never had lessons, I didn't study with anybody. Well, the truth of the matter is if you watch any kind of YouTube video, if you go through any kind of method book, if you've ever listened to a recording and tried to copy a drummer, then you've taken lessons. You've taken audio lessons, but you've never really taken lessons from somebody who's giving you feedback like these great drummers do, I'm sure. I'll have to study his history. I really haven't. I'm excited to investigate it. In this reaction and analysis series, I'm being introduced to some great suggestions by some of the fans of this channel. Please keep them coming because I want to continue to grow as a drummer, as I'm sure you do. And I love learning new things and being able to take some of my experience and point out some of the things I'm hearing them do. This would definitely be one you'd want to slow down because <laughs> you want to check out some of that great hand and footwork of the amazing Ian Pace. So I'm very glad that you guys suggested this. I hope you liked it. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel, share it with your friends, and I'll see you on some future reaction and analysis videos of these great drummers. Thanks and have a great day. Bye-bye.